If we start across the top here, we have the checkout screen. If there are no alerts on the patron account, the checkout screen will be what you see first. We can check out various items to our patron. Let's take a look at a few of those. I'm not using a scanner, I'm copying and pasting. Normally your scanner would submit automatically. And so you can see this item checked out to the patron. Now if I'm having trouble reading any of these fields, I can make changes in the grid over here. So if I click the down arrow, these functions are in any grid that displays in Evergreen. The first is to manage columns. If I click on Manage Columns, it brings up all of the categories that are available to include in this grid. And you can see there are quite a few. If I scroll back up to the top, the ones that are pre-checked by default, I can sort those to the top. And I can also determine the order that I see them in. I can also remove things that may not be particularly relevant uh, for my daily usage. So for instance, circ ID is not something that staff necessarily need to see. So I could uncheck that. Uh, it's important to see maybe the balance owed, the barcode number, the call number, and the due date. Um, family name is not necessary because I'm already in the patron account, so I know what her family name is. Um, location is shelving location. Remaining renewals, that's important to know. The title, uh, the circulation modifier may be important. Circulating library, owning library. Um, any alerts on the item, I don't particularly need that in the checkout screen. So if I change this for the checkout screen, it's only for the checkout screen on this particular workstation if I save it. So if I don't save these column changes that I'm making, it will go back to the default. And I'll show you how to save that in just a moment. Now there may be some other things I want to add. Perhaps I want to see the author. Uh, I may not need this billing information on this screen because I also have a billing screen. So uh, I may use these columns. I'll sort them to the top. Now again, I can change this, so maybe I want to see the barcode first. Make whatever changes you want to see. This can be something that a library system decides to set for all of the workstations so that everything is the same. That is something to keep in mind. If uh, staff make particular changes and save them, that will continue to show up for other users. So I'll close this and I want to go and save my columns since I did make changes. Before I do that though, I might want to manage my column widths because I did make some changes. I may want to, um, for instance, be able to see the entire barcode and I may want to see the more of the shelving location information and the due date. Uh, I may not, I may not want to see the time since that's usually 11.59.59 so perhaps I want to shrink that back down so that I only see the date here. I can also hover and see the full information. I may want to see more of the title though. So I could click and widen that. I can shrink the remaining renewals. Um, so you can make decisions about the width that you want to see. Now my barcode shrunk again. And then if I click the down arrow here again and click Save Columns, that will automatically close up the column widths interface and save my columns at the same time. And you can make changes at any time here. I will also go through some of the other options. You can reset your columns to the default. You can download a full CSV so that means that anything that's in the grid will be downloaded into an Excel spreadsheet. You can also print the full grid. These two are particularly handy in a grid like the pull list or perhaps the hold shelf. In the patron account, you have receipt options that may be more useful to your patron. While we're taking a look at the grid information, you can also see there's page one here 
and you can choose any number of pages. Now, these options are here regardless of how many pages you actually have. I'm not going to have more than one page. I only have one item on my list so far, but the options are here if there are more. You also have a default row set to 25, but you can change that to something like 100. Again, this comes in handy when you're looking at longer lists of items such as in the poll list. The actions menu is usually grayed out unless I have selected something. So once I select it, you can see the actions menu is now available to me. And the only options in this checkout screen are to add an item alert and to manage item alerts. So generally, because I'm checking out something to a patron, the only thing I might need to do to that item is to add an alert. So I could say if I notice when I'm checking the item out that maybe the spine label is missing or there's some damage to the book, I may want to put an alert to let staff know when the item is returned that that was pre-existing damage so they don't bill the patron for it. So this can be very useful. Let's say I do want to add an item alert on this and I want to make it temporary. Then I can put it for normal check-in to say item missing spine label and click OK. Now you'll see when we check in this item that uh, that item alert shows up for staff so they don't charge this patron for something that was already missing at the time of checkout. Let's check out another item to our patron. Okay, I got an exception when I scan that barcode. It says copy circ not allowed. So this item is actually a reference item and is not allowed to check out to my patron. Now you'll see that I have an option here to force the action. If I have the permissions to force the action, then I could, in special circumstances, check out this item to the patron. In most cases, you don't want to check out reference copies to your patron, and so I would hit cancel and explain to the patron that they can't check out that item. Let's check out another item to our patron. So this item has an open circulation. This item is either checked out to another patron or you may get the same message if this patron happened to have this item checked out and what they meant to do was to ask you to renew the item but they forgot and they just stacked it with their other books. So you don't know for sure who this item is checked out to. What I recommend in most cases is to cancel and take a look at the item status screen for this item so that you can see who has the item checked out and what the circumstances are before you take this action. Now once you take a look at the item status screen, you can check it in from that screen so you wouldn't get this message or you can just make sure that there's nothing that needs to be addressed with that item and go ahead Maybe you want to forgive fines if that item was just found on the shelf and hadn't gotten checked in, and then check normal check-in and check out. So what that will do is check it in from the patron who had it last, and because I checked the forgive fines box, it will forgive those fines and go ahead and check this item out to my patron here. Now let's say because of the coronavirus quarantine that I want to check out an item for a longer period of time to the patron. If you look over to the side here, I can click on date options and choose specific due date, which means I'm going to set a due date. And you can use specific due date until logout. In the coronavirus quarantine period, this might be something that staff want to use and select a date that is far enough into the future based on your library policies and expectations so that patrons uh, don't have to worry about renewing this item anytime soon. So I'm going to check this out and you can see my due date is 6-1. Now let's say I made this change and then realized that I wanted to apply it to the previous circulations. So I may want to change that date. I can't do it 
with this Actions menu, but if I go to my Items Out, you will see that the items that I just checked out are also in the Items Out screen, and I can make the changes to the date. So I'll want to select both these items, go to the Actions menu, which is always in the same spot, and I have a lot more options here. And the one I want to choose is to edit due date. So I want to change my due date to June 1st, like the others. Now you can see that it um, puts a time here. Even if I leave that, it'll be fine because it will actually change it to 11.59 because we give the patrons the whole day to return their items. So it doesn't matter what that time stamp is. The date stamp, you can see, did change to 6.01. Let's take a look at some additional ways you might check items out to your patron. Some patrons borrow interlibrary loan materials, and when you receive those materials, it's important to ensure that the existing barcode on the item doesn't conflict with any other barcode in the NC Cardinal Consortium. Because if I scanned a conflicting barcode and checked out something to my patron, it wouldn't be the interlibrary loan item, it would actually be the item that belongs to another library in the consortium. So whenever you're checking out interlibrary loan materials to patrons, it's a good idea to check to make sure there's not a conflict with the barcode, in which case you can go ahead and use it. If there is a conflict with the barcode, you can put in a prefix like ILL. Of course, the thing you need to keep in mind is that if you put in such a prefix, you'll need to also put it in when checking in the material so that the material comes off the patron account. So that is something that uh, staff will need to be aware of who are checking out interlibrary loan materials to patrons. Um, libraries have different processes for that, but it is a wise idea to check the barcode and all of that before you check the item out to the patron and not have to do it on the spot. But I'm going to check out this interlibrary loan item to my patron using uh, the barcode that um, we're going to say is on the item and I'm going to prefix it with ILL. And so I'll put in my barcode and of course Evergreen doesn't recognize that barcode so it's going to tell me that the item was misscanned or is a non-cataloged item. You do want to make sure that you have scanned the barcode correctly. If, for instance, a patron brings to the desk an item that does not come up in the database, it could be either that staff have misscanned the barcode or the barcode reader didn't catch all the numbers, or it could be one of those situations where the item was missing and catalogers eventually deleted it because no one could find it, and then suddenly your patron found it on the shelf. So, if that happens, just make sure the barcode I've highlighted is correct. Then you can go ahead and check it out to the patron. When staff check in items that are in a pre-cataloged or non-cataloged state, it will tell them to route the item to cataloging. So I'm going to enter information. Not that anyone would uh, get Harry Potter from ILL, but uh, just as an example. You can put in the ISBN, but it's not crucial. What is crucial is to enter a circulation modifier so that your item hits the correct circulation policy. Now, if you have a generic policy for books and this item can circulate for that period of time, then you can use book. There is also an ILL circulation modifier in NC Cardinal. If there's not a policy for ILL, it will hit a generic policy. You may also need to have a specific due date for ILL materials, and we'll take a look at how to change a due date in the Items Out screen. So for now, I'll choose this and choose Pre-Catalog Checkout, and the item will show up on my list. You can see it does list the circulation modifier as ILL. There also may be situations uh, 
where some libraries have materials that are not barcoded and not intended to be. So libraries may have materials uh, like swap paperbacks where patrons have donated paperback books and the library wants to count the circulation for letting those materials go out the door, but they don't really care whether, whether the materials really come back. That's what we call a non-catalog circulation. And so if you go to barcode and click on it, you'll see any non-cataloged types that have been listed by your library. Paperback book is the default for all of NC Cardinal, so we're going to use that. So when I click on paperback book, you can see I can't scan a barcode, but when I click submit, it's going to ask me how many paperback books are circulating. So let's say we're circulating two to the patron. When I click OK, you can see, of course, there's no barcode. Uh, the title is just paperback book. Again, we're not counting on getting these items back. And uh, the default due date is 14 days. So uh, it's going to set that due date. And then when we look at item status, we'll see how those items are listed. Once this item checks out, you can't change the due date, you can't check the items in, they simply disappear from the patron record in 14 days. So again, this is a limited use case for those situations. Some libraries have books, some libraries have magazines, where they go out the door, the library wants to count it as a circulation, but it doesn't matter whether the materials come back. Once I've completed all the checkouts for my patron, I may want to print a receipt or at least check with the patron to see if they want a receipt. Now, this particular patron has established during her registration that she would like receipts emailed to her by default. So you can see the little email icon. If that wasn't the case, a little printer icon would show here. If I click on Quick Receipt, it will automatically email the patron or I can choose from the drop down menu if she happens to want a print receipt today. So these are the options for a quick receipt. If you know that your patron has finished everything um, that they want to do, you can go ahead and click done or you can choose from the options here. So if I click done without selecting an option, my patron will get an email receipt or if she doesn't need a receipt today, then I can click no receipt, or if she wants a print receipt, I can click that. If by chance you click done and close out of your patron account, you can always go to circulation and retrieve last patron. That will bring the account back.